video is targeted basically at anybody who is either thinking about having a, a, the new MP3 530 or you know even owners that might not have had time to get familiar with the, the scooter and the features. So I'm just going to have a little walk around now and go through the, the main parts, the controls, and then I'm going to cover those in a little bit more detail later and go through each control and what it does and you know how you can use it. So you can see here, for example, uh, one thing that's definitely new to a lot of users is the cruise control. And I'm going to cover that in detail in a video. Down here you have uh, the menu buttons, uh, which I'm going to go through as well. And you have your standard uh, indicator, of course. Um, the only negative is, you can probably hear this, even though I've selected the left indicator, and this happens when the engine's running as well there's still a click so if I indicate left and I'm questioning whether I've actually got my indicator on I have to look at the screen to make sure that it's on and really there should be some haptic feedback there a click to let me know that it's on and then no click once it's active which it does on the the 400 down here of course you've got the, the horn and underneath here you have the reverse control. In fact, let me just move the handlebar so you can see that a little bit easier. So right now we have it set to drive and we just flick it back to go into reverse. And I'm gonna cover that in a video later. Down here, we've got the seat release and the gas release or the, the petrol cover release. And you also have these on the remote control. So I can release the seat uh, or the petrol and uh, sorry, that's bike finder. So if I press that, it should light up all the lights. Yeah, there we go. And I prefer to use the buttons uh, for one simple reason I'll show you now. So I'm going to release the petrol cap and hopefully get that in the shot as well. So it's almost instant. Now I'm going to press the petrol cap release button, one, two, three, nearly four seconds. So I prefer to just use the, the buttons on the console. You've got your bag holder of course, and the handbrake. The handbrake I find is far easier than the older model, uh, the 400 that I have. Literally with one finger I can disengage it or engage it. And then you have the control here, the ignition. So if I just turn the handlebar to the left, press that because the button's close by. And now just lock it. If I walk away, the lights will flash and it locks the bike. Now it's uh, disengaged or the, the steering lock is disengaged. And if I turn it to on, you'll see the dashboard turns on while the screen turns on and then I can just press the ignition button to start the engine if I have it turned on of course so let's just go around the other side you'll see here I've got the control for the lights so at the moment it's just on head beam and then I can have uh, daytime running lights selected. I just leave that on main beam all the time and as you'll see on the, the dashboard I have daytime running lights set to automatic. Over here on the right hand side we've got the hazard warning lights, ignition start stop and then this is the tilt lock system which let me just turn the ignition off. So I'm going to go through that later in the video, but you can turn the tilt lock on or off using this. And what that does in effect is keep the bike or the, the scooter upright. You can see here, it's not on a stand. 
which is one of the great features of this particular you know brand of scooter I had the 400 and now the 530 and the ability to just be able to put the handbrake on put the tilt lock on and step off the bike is fantastic you don't have to mess around with a the kickstand there is actually as you can see here the main stand which I use when I'm parking on a night but typically I'll just use the handbrake and the tilt lock and just leave the bike down at the right hand side here you've got the foot brake which I have used occasionally but I prefer the, con the finer control of the, the handbrakes on the left you've got the rear brake and on the right the front brake So some other features to this particular brand of scooter, you'll see here we have some space above the screen. There's a USB charging port. The, I've tested the output, it's only 500 milliamps. So it's not actually strong enough to put a good charge into a phone, which is why I have a charging bank. So I have the charging bank connected to the USB port and then my phone's connected to the charging bank as you can see I've got plenty of cables in here and there's plenty of space the only negative really is no light which isn't a problem during the day but at night I can't see in here and you might have various things in there and just want to get a particular item out so it's only a minor issue but something that's easy to fix I think also the storage space here could be bigger um, but that's perhaps going to come in the next model So some other features unique to the MP3 are, uh, I'll just sit across the bike so I can show you this. Here you've got the ignition switch. So the ignition obviously starts the engine, but it also has a couple of other functions. Uh, for example, when you select the uh, reverse gear and then press the ignition switch, it reverses but again I'm going to cover that in a video one other thing it does is it allows you to change the mode uh, quite easily so I'll just start the bike up so you'll see now it's set to sport mode I'll just press this button and it switches to comfort and I press again and it will switch to Eco. So it's a multifunction switch. Um, it's in the manual, but it's just easy to watch a video, I guess. Down here as well, I forgot to mention there's the ASR switch to disable the anti-slip system, which I just leave on all the time so a couple of other things that I've noticed while riding the bike the return on the throttle is really it's not hard but it's not as gentle as it is on the old older models however I do use cruise control quite a lot so I don't really see that being an issue although if you were on a long journey using the throttle for a long time um, I think that might become an issue the mode switch as well sometimes decides it's not going to work and I think that's when you're accelerating although I haven't tested but it definitely works if you release the throttle and then press the button it changes the mode one other thing I noticed as well was the LCDAS system, the, the lane change system, actually disabled because I hit a speed hump quite hard and once I turned the engine off and turned it back on it was fine but just something to um, you know be aware of. Another minor issue is as you can see the ignition is currently turned on which means the headlamps are also turned on. 
but on the 400 and the 500, the older models, the headlamps would actually turn off when the ignition was turned off. So it's just something you have to be aware of and just turn the ignition off when you're not using the bike. I don't think uh, the um, LED headlamps are going to you know, drain the battery very quickly, but it's a, a thought, something to consider when you're using the bike. So let's move on to the space under the seat. As you can see, there's quite a lot of space. In fact, I carry a full set of camera equipment under here when I'm out for rides. And I have one, and I believe I can get a second modular helmet under here. There we go. The only drawback is the seat doesn't close fully, so I have to press it down. My suggestion would be if you're going to use two modular helmets, don't keep them under the seat for a long time because it will strain uh, the hinges on the seat. Now, it's probably difficult to see on the camera, um, but the pillion seat is actually uh, huge. Uh, there's more than enough space here for a full adult and because the new model doesn't have the backrest at the back of the seat, it means that the person's back is literally in line with the, the top box. And I've had my partner on this with a rucksack, leaning against the top box. I'm sat at the front and we weren't even squashed up. There's lots of space for two people on the scooter although the camera angle can be a bit deceiving. The things I found, a system that's unique to the uh, Piaggio MP3 range is the parallelogram um, suspension. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly because I'm not a mechanic. It's, it's basically a system that provides, in effect, independent suspension to, to both of the front wheels. And what I'm going to do is just uh, take some bends and show you that system from the perspective um, underneath, looking in, but also looking forward. And it's an interesting experience. Now, when I first sat on the 400 MP3, um, the first thing that surprised me was the weight, the, the quite heavy. The 400cc that I have is 270 kilograms, and the 530 that I'm riding now is 280 kilograms which is very heavy for a scooter. However, once you're moving anything more than a few kilometers an hour, you really don't notice the weight. I, I don't, and I find it handles just as well as a, a two-wheel scooter. I find that uh, leaning in bends uh, is not so much uh, uh, hard work as some people might think because of the white weight and the size of the bike and it comes with a number of advantages um, for example I was out with a, a friend of mine he was on a two-wheel bike uh, that belongs to another friend of mine and he noticed when we were taking bends that sometimes I would change my um, course in the middle of the bend and he said, you, you just can't do that on a two-wheel bike. Uh, but on this, I can. Another thing that he noticed was um, I was uh, going over rough or gravelly areas where he wouldn't. And it made absolutely no difference to me. 
once or twice the back wheel would skip uh, but because it's got the ASR system that captured those slips so the bike didn't fall another another huge advantage is riding in the wet not that it gets wet very often here in the south of Tenerife but it does and my uh, riding style changes very little I will obviously give more braking distance because unfortunately when it's damp or rainy here there are quite a lot of accidents people tend to drive far too close and that was one of the reasons why I moved from a 125 to a 400 and now a 530 because I was just tired of people tailgating me and on a 125 it's extremely difficult to get away and another thing that I, I noticed was riding in the rain I would take bends at first I would take them upright or just lean a little bit but once I got familiar with the with the scooter and the extra grip and stability that the three wheels gives me I started leaning further into bends 